And this gives you an idea of we actually know that this infinite process could converge in a finite amount of time. Really, it took until this time. And if we were to go way back, let's go ahead and have kind of a logarithmic scale backwards to around, I think it was 200 or 300 BC. That Zeno of Alea used actually the same argument for saying that you know, motion was inherently impossible and that, and that um, you know, it, we could never go anywhere and all, that, all motion was an illusion because we require doing an infinite amount of stuff and that you could never do an infinite amount of stuff because it would necessarily be infinite. But it took us as you know, a human collective conscious well over you know, 1,700, close to 2,000 years to understand and develop the tools necessary to deal with infinities. Um, so that's, I think that's a really kind of important thing to deal with. Um, and I could go on and give entire courses about in infinities and talk about a lot of the important characters. Um, and there's just, some, there's just one term I want to introduce um, and a couple concepts really quickly. That's the idea that there's never a top infinity. And you can, and you can always construct more infinities from smaller ones. Um, and you can actually carry out kind of a formal system for playing around with these infinities. And uh, you, know, you, can have, you have your natural numbers, 3, and then dot, 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 dot. And then we can just say, OK, well, let's take all of those guys, and we'll call them omega. Well, then we can take omega, and then we can take omega plus 1, and dot, dot. And now we've got two omegas. And then we can actually start carrying out cardinal arithmetic. Um, you might also see, and there's kind of a mix of notations and, con and uh, concepts between different fields, but you might also see this first level of infinity as a leaf, a leaf naught, or a leaf sub zero. Um, and this refers to the level of infinity which you get from the natural numbers. Of course, some of you may or may not know this, but um, we've got all sorts of infinities. We can start constructing tons, but we can even define exponentiation. So, so one of the big things is that, well, what happens when you have two raised to the Aleph naught. Well, the claim is that this is Aleph 1, which is roughly the size of the reals. So, and we're talking all your numbers on the real line. And this was really, this is kind of a paradoxical thing, because in here we have this many, right? And what's very strange is, yeah, go ahead. Is it like a property of infinite, like? Amounts have like subsets of them that are the same thing as the whole thing. Yes, exactly. So you just actually stated a very rigorous form of defining something to be infinite, is that you can put it into one-to-one -one correspondence with itself. What Latif said is, yes, is one of the properties of infinity the fact that you can put it in correspondence with a subset of itself. And the idea is, so for example, take um, we can take the normal integers. And fortunately, we have an infinite amount of those guys. And we can put them into one-to-one -one correspondence with the even numbers. And we can create a completely bijective map just by division or multiplication by 2. But the weird thing is that we intuitively feel like there are all of these guys are inside of here. So there should be less of them than, than these. But with infinity, you can do all sorts of things. Um, and that's what's magical. And what's nice is you can also take the, the interval 0 to 1. And you can create a map which sends this to the entire infinite real line. So it's amazing because we can capture an infinite thing in a very finite way. Um, and we also know, because of a, a good guy named Cantor, Uh, that there, that these are really different quantities, that there's a level of infinity different between the natural numbers and the reals. Um, and that deals with a diagonal argument, which I can maybe show you one day. Um, so 
you guys kind of read chapter five, which was recursive structures and processes, for today's lecture, although we've been talking a lot about other things. And this is really motivated because uh, you got an excellent lecture last time from Kern Kelleher, who showed you all the different varieties in which infinity and recursion kind of come together. Um, but fundamentally, we still have, we still have a question which we're, which we're pursuing. Um, and this kind of derives back to, I think, our two most important tools for thinking, which we'll meet in this, in this first part of the book. And that's recursion and isomorphism. And remember, isomorphisms um, come about when you're trying to put equivalence relationships.